Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Cooper. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Um, on behalf of the CHTA, I'd like to welcome you all to our Chief Sneak Preview Webinar Series, uh, where we will be giving you a glimpse into all the actionable and game-changing information we will be sharing for you at our Chief Conference. The first topic of which is the ever-expanding and wonderful world of social media. Um, to give you a reminder, our chief conference, Caribbean Hospitality Industry Exchange Forum, will take place October 2nd to 4th at El Conquistador in Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Early registration for this event ends August 1st, which is this Friday. Mm -hmm. So make sure to get on to uh, chtachief.com at chtachief.com before the end of the week to take advantage of great discounts. Before we present to you today's speakers, uh, we've got a few housekeeping items to take care of. This presentation is being recorded. You'll be able to access the video as well as the PowerPoint presentation 48 hours after the webinar is over on our website, CaribbeanHotelAndTourism.com. Just a click on CHTA Learning Tools button on the home page. The presentation will last 30 minutes. After the presentation, there will be a 15-minute Q&A, and you can submit your questions by typing them into the webinar's chat room. Any additional questions we do not have time to get to will be answered by the speakers after the webinar. The speaker's contact information is on the last page of today's presentation. And without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to today's speakers. Um, Javier Morales, who is a co-founder of Social Caddy, an industry heavy hitter, a guy that spent 25 plus years developing relationships and learning the ins and outs of the hospitality uh, marketing business, um, working for companies the likes of Air Jamaica, Certified Vacations, Marriott Caribbean and, and Mexico Resorts, and so on. Uh, thank you, Javier, and welcome. We also have Adriana Serna, who is our very own communications manager here at the CHTA and knocking it out of the park with more than 15 years experience in working in, with international corporations like Aero Mexico, Tiffany, Franklin Templeton, and now we're blessed to have her here, uh, making us more socially viral than ever. Thank you, Adriana. I'll turn it over to you. Or Javier. There you go. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, and again, thank you, Matt, for the great introduction. And to get started, we'd like to kind of start with the understanding of the travel decision-making process and how it's changed from what it used to be to what it is now. Um, in the past, we've seen that process sort of start off with the, when someone's actually thinking and dreaming about going someplace and then going into the planning phase, which is doing some research, finding information, whether it's um, through online or through print, and then the booking process. In the past, it's been either a travel agent or an online tour operator, like, you know, Expedia's and Orbit and so forth. And then at the end, of course, the experience and actually getting to the location and destination and enjoying and having a great time. So now we have to how that has changed. Well, now basically this is an outline of six different phases that people kind of go through. The, the first is the inspiration. Uh, the inspiration phase is basically when they start seeing and dreaming of where they want to go and understanding that 62% of people are inspired by family and friends and colleagues that are posting information throughout the Internet. And that includes social media as well. And then from there it goes into the planning phase. And that's the gathering information and also reviewing online platforms like TripAdvisor to make that decision as far as where they want to go. The next step is the comparing. And the comparing phase is interesting because there's new tools out there like MetaSearch, like companies like Trivago, Google, Google Postal Finder, and Kayak that basically aggregate information and you're able to see prices from a variety of suppliers all on one screen. From there, of course, we go into the transaction phase, and that's when they actually make the purchase and um, book the vacation. And then the fifth is the travel. It's actually when they're getting there. And then the last is the sixth, which is the post-travel. Now, one of the interesting things to kind of realize that amongst all these different phases, people are actually utilizing social media. So even from the beginning with their inspiration and looking at 
sites like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and they get inspired, even then going into the planning, they're still utilizing social media to gather all this information. And even when you go towards the end, post-travel, when people come back from their vacation, they're usually posting information and sharing that throughout the different platforms. Any questions? Keep going. Okay, so now it's, uh, hi guys, this is Adrienne. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the basic elements of digital marketing. And there is a uh, trinity, so to speak, uh, the three basic elements that you need in order to have successful digital marketing. One of them is a website. Obviously, everybody needs to have a website and have good SEO. The other one is an email or a, a mean email database or a way to harness your customer's data. And then, of course, there's social media. The reason these three are so important to have together, you really shouldn't have one without the other, is that social media is not a standalone element. It's supposed to be part of your marketing mix. So it's very important that everybody understand that social media is not the magic pill. It's not the magic bullet, something that will go ahead and fix everything and for for a mini a mini budget you know so you need to have your social media drive traffic to your website which then your website harnesses your customers data and that data can then drive them again back to social so it's a beautiful little circle and it really does make all of the difference to have all three elements correctly aligned for your digital media to soar let's look at the next slide and here's some perfect examples of what I was saying before. With the website, you need a website that converts, something that empowers your customers to purchase and actually sets the mark for online reviews. When someone goes to your hotel's website and it's very hard to navigate, they can't make purchases, it's very difficult, it really does affect your ratings online, which then affects your conversion. And there's actually a session at Chief that's called Ratings and Reviews, Does It Matter What They Say About You Online? And this is a wonderful session, and we'll be able to delve a lot more into this at Chief about the importance of having a really well-functioning website and solid reviews online. And like I said, email is very important, again, because it enhances your knowledge of your customer. The, no, the more you know your customer, the better and the easier it is to sell to them. And it also enables you to make concrete data-driven marketing decisions, really smart decisions. And again, at Chief, we're going to be able to go into this a little bit more. There's a session called Unleash the, Pow the Potential Power of Your Customer Data. And that's one that you cannot miss. And then, of course, there's the session that Javier will be moderating, which is, uh, which is the sneak peek into this webinar. And it's no, no. You follow we're, me. we're sitting too close together. So I have to would you listen, um, would you follow me driving uh, sales through social media? So um, all of this will be looked into more in depth during Chief. And I, we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so what, what, is, what is the deal with social media marketing as far as travel is concerned? It has, as Javier said at the beginning, completely changed the game. Social media has completely changed the way people purchase online. And it, and it happens even before they've set foot on a plane or walked through your lobby. And it starts with inspiration, right? 65% of travelers turn to the web early on in the travel process just to get ideas. People go on Pinterest and create Pinterest boards. People Google search. People ask their friends on Facebook or just look at the pictures that friends have taken of vacations on Facebook and get inspired. 65% get travel inspiration from family and friends online. 50% of direct bookings are generated by social. So it absolutely behooves you to be on social media and on as many platforms as possible. 55% like the Facebook pages specific to a vacation. So if I want to go to Jamaica, more than likely I've liked the Jamaica Facebook page and been looking at pictures for a while. Next slide, please. Hello? Next slide, please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
now I'm on the plane, I know where I'm going, I've, just, I've picked a destination, and now it doesn't stop there. Social media keeps getting in there and making, make, shaping the trip for me. 40% of posting activity for restaurants and hotel reviews happen while the person is traveling. So they are posting and evaluating you on the fly as they're experiencing your hotel and your restaurant. 85% of travelers use their smartphones while traveling. 46% check into a location while on vacation, and that's through something like Foursquare or Facebook that you say, hey, guess what? I'm, I'm in St. Lucia right now to make all of their friends you know, a little bit envious. 70% update their Facebook statuses while on vacation. Again, just for that social proof of saying, I'm in an awesome destination right now. And that's wonderful for the destination, and that's wonderful for your hotel. Next slide. And then when they get home, it doesn't stop there. 40% of travelers post activity, of, of post, um, make posts about the activity or attractions that they saw <coughs> and review them online. 46% post their hotel's re reviews once they get home. 76% of people post pictures of their trip on social. How many people are not guilty of that? I've certainly done it. 55% of people like the specific pages, again, after they get home. If they didn't like it before, they like the hotel after they get home. So it's really part of the entire process. Throughout the whole thing, we're getting all of this digital word of mouth. Next page. So why is it so the, the, the critical thing with social media marketing is that you have to think strategically like a business, but you still have to be social because remember it's a social network. So you're writing a fine line there. You have to be, you have to remember social media is part of your overall integrated digital marketing plan. So you have to be strategic. You have to know how to play by the rules. Use, it, use your page versus a profile. You have to know the difference between, for example, a Facebook page and a Facebook profile. You have to integrate your social media. You have to leverage your employees and your vendors and your associations. Um, make sure that they like their pages and, ask, and in turn they will like yours. Talk to your employees and your vendors and your associations online. Acknowledge new media, which are bloggers more and more Bloggers are one of the most influential mediums online for travel. So if you haven't started following bloggers that your customers are already following them, please do so today. And learn how to provide really good customer service online. Twitter is known for this. Twitter has pretty much taken over 800 numbers. People don't call 800 numbers anymore to complain about service. They do it on Twitter. And they get better responses. But you have to remember to also be social. So don't post ads on your social media. Look to provide value, not advertising. Look to provide posts that are entertaining, educational, and that engage. Ask your consumers questions. Get them involved. Have a dialogue online, because that's what it's about. It's about being social. And give them what they know, what they need to know in order to buy. That's very important. Instead of telling, instead of pushing an ad in their face and saying, for $99.99, you can get this hotel room today if you purchase now, give them reasons to choose your hotel. Give them reasons to choose your island. Give them what they need in order to say yes and purchase. And then make that purchasing very easy with a click. Make it a click away. And it's also very important to build a relationship with your followers, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them if you can. The more connected they are to your business, the more loyal they'll be to your business. And the best way to manage all of these things and to do this is to listen. A lot of us forget we're just putting out content and content and content on social, and we forget to listen. And the big deal about that is that we won't know what really good content is and what will move people to act unless we listen first. So I'll pass over the baton again to Javier. Okay. <clears throat> so now the question is, are you winning at social? Uh, one of the key things is um, to set up goals. So understanding that every social media platform has a specific audience. You know, when you look at Instagram, for example, the demographics of Instagram are the younger teenagers, 
Um, when you look at Pinterest, um, understanding that 80% of the people that are on Pinterest are, are female and less than 20% of the pictures that are on Pinterest are of faces. It's basically setting up your goals to target the specific demographics utilizing the different social media platforms. Um, goals for social media don't always have to be uh, to drive sales. Um, as I'll explain in my next slide, is the social media posts play a big role in search engine optimization. So the idea behind some of the goals is basically to create conversations, to create specific conversations about specific topics, basically to continue conversations throughout the different platforms and tying them all in together. Have a content strategy. Be consistent with your messaging. What you want to do is if you're posting something on Facebook, you want to make sure that if you post something similar, you're giving the same exact facts on all the other different platforms. Because understanding that a lot of people are utilizing multiple platforms. So they may be following you on Facebook, but they may, may be also following you on Twitter and Pinterest and so on. Uh, speak the voice of each platform. Again, understanding each platform and understanding the demographics, speak that voice. Understanding that Instagram is a younger generation, so there you want to basically put keywords that target that audience. And again, the same thing when you're looking at Pinterest, Twitter, and the other different platforms. Don't overthink content. Keep it short and engaging. One of the most amazing things that I find is a lot of people will sit there and kind of think about what they want to write strategically and try to tie it into their goals. Sometimes a simple picture or sometimes three words can make the difference. So again, don't overthink it. Keep it short and keep it engaging. Post open-ended questions when you're posting information, again, in order to drive conversations to get them to respond. In addition, monitor your pages. So when people are asking questions or posting in your comments, you're also engaging them by responding to those comments. Use all media to create content. Again, it's not always text. Using videos, images, links, and so on plays a very powerful role in the engagement. Measure results. Utilize analytics to measure the success of your campaigns. One of the tools that we use is Google Analytics. Um, Google Analytics basically gives us the ability to dig in deep and find out who's engaging, where they're engaging from, and what they're engaging with. So one of the important things is to, to utilize these analytics to kind of steer your campaigns and, and your goals. So if you post something and you look at your analytics and you see that it got big reach or a lot of people engage with it, well now you know that that's a post at work and you might want to change that a little bit and use that um, in the future for your posting strategy. Adjust your campaign based on the information gathered. Again, it's taking the information that you receive and you're looking at and basically restructuring your campaigns to meet those targets based on what people are engaging with. And understanding that each platform engages differently. Sometimes people just by uh, clicking like, um, it's considered engagement when you look at optimization, and some others are just the text or responding to comments. Now, one of the really, really big things that's pretty exciting is how does social media play a role in driving traffic? One of the key things is the search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing all have what's called an algorithm. The algorithm is a formula that's utilized that basically determines how you are ranked when someone goes into these search engines and puts in a specific keyword. So for example, if somebody puts in destination wedding packages, you would see the list and certain, uh, certain partners come up listed uh, in different orders from one to 10. Now, what Google's algorithm now does, it takes into account the social media engagement platform. So it also digs into your website, if it's connected to a social media platforms like Facebook, how many fans you have, how often are you posting, how often people are engaging, and how often you are responding. So all these elements going back are what creates what's called your website authority. Now, what Google does, it indexes your website based on that authority. So let's say it's on a scale from 1 to 10. It looks at different factors, which includes the structure of your website, how many pages, how many links are going out, how many links are going in. But again, taking into account that social media aspect is now becoming part of that formula that kind of helps you move up organically in the sorter. So again, something to take into account when you're setting up your posting strategy is to utilize keywords in your post and in your engagement that are going to be able to be found on the search engines that are going to help drive traffic to your website. Best practices for social media overall. Although there's uh, each platform has its own audience and has their best practices, there are some best practices that are pretty much across the board. 
have unique content for the about sections. One of the key things with search engine optimization is that Google is always looking for fresh content. So what you don't want to do is you do not want to take your about us section of your website and copy and paste that into your Facebook about section. What you want to do is you want to be able to have the same information but worded differently utilizing those specific keywords. Include link to the main site. In the about section and even on Facebook now, they allow you to be able to put a link on your, to your website on the page itself. So you want to go ahead and utilize that because, again, when you're looking at the search engines, they're looking for all these key things throughout these different platforms. Have a posting strategy. Although sometimes people just sort of wing it, it's good to have an idea of what you want to do, either on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis. When you start looking at putting a posting strategy together that's past a week, it makes it a little bit difficult because things do change. So the concept is to basically determine a topic and then create your posting strategy around that topic in order to support it. So if your topic is about wedding, what you want to do is you want to have a strategy that has a certain amount of information that's posted on Facebook about weddings with links back to your website. You want to be on Pinterest and post beautiful wedding pictures. You want to go on YouTube and post an old wedding video. Um, and again, everything is consistent across the board and it's part of your posting strategy. Be engaging. Don't always just post information, pictures, sometimes ask questions, get involved in different conversations. These platforms now utilizing hashtags give you the ability to jump in and jump into conversations that are very specific to whatever topic you're looking, looking for. So again, if, if we're using wedding as an example, what you want to do is do hashtag wedding and do a search to see what people are saying and how people are engaging, and then figure out a way to strategically place yourself as part of that conversation. Be human. Be human is key. Social media is all about conversations. What you don't want to do is sound like a robot. You, the, the terminology, the linking, and your structure throughout the posting strategy should have that human voice. Just as in your website, the social media platforms develop a personality. And it's important that you engage as that personality, whether it's asking questions or responding to information or just posting information. You want to give people that feeling that they're actually speaking to someone. Monitor page insights. Facebook, for example, has a great tool of insights. It lets you determine the demographics of your uh, social media platforms, how often people are engaging, the number of likes, and so forth. Again, putting together a posting strategy is important to get that information. So if you're looking at your Facebook analytics and you see that 80% of the fan base is there is women, then what you want to do is make sure that the posting strategy is targeted to the majority of your audience to drive engagement. Use links on your post to drive traffic back to your core site. Again, talking about search engine optimization, what you want to do and the goal on top of creating conversations and driving engagement is to drive SEO. So you don't want to do it all the time, but every now and then what you want to do is post information that drives traffic back to your website. Optimize your posts by using keywords. Again, almost going back into the search engine optimization, what you want to do is utilize keywords. So for example, if you're posting something and you want to target destination weddings, you want to post something, for example, that would say, you know, we hope that you were here for, this be for your beautiful destination wedding. By putting that, you're utilizing the keywords destination wedding, or you want to put your destination wedding in St. John or St. Thomas. Again, utilizing the keywords within that post will help you make that, optimize that post for search engine optimization. Best practices for Facebook. Create an eye-catching cover image. And images are everything, especially in social media. What you want to do is grab someone's attention as soon as they get to your Facebook page by creating a nice visual on the top cover. You also want to add a call to action button. Facebook now allows you to add a call to action, not only on the page itself, but if you upload a video at the end of the video, it gives you the opportunity to add a call to action. So you want to either put that towards your booking engine, you want to put that to a questionnaire. You can basically put any call to action link in there that would automatically send the uh, visitor there. Monitor page insights to determine the frequency of postings. Um, one of, the, one of the big questions that we get all the time is like, how often should we be posting? The reality is that there is no real magic number. It depends on how your fans engage. There are some industries that people engage almost four or five different posts a day work perfect. Some other industries, if you post more than two or three times, it almost comes across as spam. 
So again, you utilize your insights to be able to determine the frequency of your post, post images. Again, images are very eye-catching, so what you want to do is utilize Facebook to be able to put some good quality images that can be shared. Post videos and utilize the call to action button. Again, uploading a video directly to Facebook will give you the option at the end to add a call to action. So again, you can put that to a phone number, a form, or your actual booking niche. Utilize hashtags that are relevant. So one of the important things is if somebody, again, is looking for wedding information, and you put a post out there that has nothing to do with weddings and you use the hashtag wedding, well, now you're joining a conversation with information that's not relevant to that filter that people are discussing. So it actually hurts you because that post will not get any engagement, which, again, is measured by the Google algorithms and the search engine algorithms. So in essence, what that does is that kind of works against you. So you want to do some research, and when you put together your posting strategy, make sure that you utilize the hashtag correctly. Respond to messages and comments to increase engagement. One of, the, one of the rules is social media, you're inviting people to be a part of your conversation. The worst thing you could do is ask somebody to follow you and they ask a question and nobody responds. For rule, each platform, again, is a little bit different, but for rule, 48 hours, between 24 to 48 hours is a good response time to anyone asking questions or pasting comments on your social media platform, especially Facebook. Join groups that are relevant to your business. There's tons and tons of different groups, whether it's from hospitality marketing to local events to uh, if you want to target uh, a certain demographic, again, doing a little bit of research and finding groups that are relevant to your business that you want to join to either get information or as a resource or to push out information. Thanks to that. Okay, Instagram is uh, one of the newest, most up-and-coming social platforms. It has been very, very, very popular amongst millennials, and hashtags are the lifeblood of Instagram. If any of you are on the platform and you see a plethora of, ha of hashtags right next to the post, there's a reason for that because the hashtag is what allows you to track and to you know, look up things that are of interest to you, you search by hashtag. And unlike on Facebook and Twitter, the more hashtags you use, the more searchable your posts become. So, and since Instagram is really a mobile image-based platform, it was created as a mobile-only site. So right now it's becoming a little bit more uh, PC or computer friendly, desktop friendly, but it was made initially to just use on your phone. So Instagram relies primarily on the images and it's all about the images. That's why adding 10 to 20 hashtags is not unheard of and it actually might be a good strategy depending on which hashtags you use. Uh, on the presentation here I put a link to a software or a site called Econa Square, and that provides you your Instagram analytics because unlike Facebook and Twitter, Instagram doesn't have its own analytics yet. I'm sure it will very, very soon, but for the time being, you can go onto Econa Square and it will tell you, it will compare the hashtags that you've been using versus the ones that are really hot and popular at the moment. With your, with your audience, and you can, the middle ground between those, the ones that you instinctively, organically use, and the ones that are uh, very popular at the moment, the, the meeting ground of those two, those are the hashtags you need to use consistently. So I would go on Econa Square and check it out and see um, all of your, your analytics for Instagram to make data-driven, smart decisions. Oh, on Instagram, another thing is that, of course, the main focus is the image. So you have to make sure that whatever images you utilize are clear, are bright, and are eye-catching. Uh, oftentimes you see brands or people in, even put up images that are blurry, they're too dark, it's hard to make out what you're, what you're seeing. They're not, they're not eye-catching enough. So make sure that you have really nice quality images. They don't have to be studio perfect, which is, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But it is important that they be clear and, and, and eye-catching. 
actually when it comes to what type of photography or what type of images work best on Instagram, user generated content, meaning content taken by your average Joe with their iPhone, are the ones that actually produce the most engagement, even more than paid photography. So, or and much more than stock photography. So it's very important to give your images a personality. And the way you use that is that you try with, with as much as you can to use pictures that associate or that try to associate your brand with certain ideas and feelings that the person wants to see. There, in the case of travel, something that's very inspirational, a picture of your resort or somebody having a cold margarita on the side of a beautiful pool with turquoise waters glistening in the sun and a tagline that says, wish you were here. You know, that's something that I would like and I would share. And it's because it's enticing, it's aspirational. I want to go there. I want to be there. So make sure that the images that you use are beautiful, yes, but and they don't have to, you don't have to spend a ton of money actually putting together really great images. You just have to have a good eye and be mindful that the quality of the images are, are up to par. You can also use memes, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, and references to pop culture in your images are also great because it gives it, again, a little bit of a personality, a little bit of a sense of humor, and it ties in your product, again, with um, positive sentiments. Uh, but and it, it it helps you also tag things together with pop with popular hashtags. And another one, another type of image that really works very well are behind the scenes images. People like to feel like they have a glimpse into the background, into how things are done. That they have an insider VIP look at your hotel or your restaurant or your property. So you can show images of meals being prepared, of, um, of pools being uh, decked out for a party or things like that. People or casual pictures of people having a great time uh, enjoying your beaches. Things that behind the scenes images work really well. All of these best practice slides, as you can see right underneath Instagram, there's a little link that says case study Kamado restaurant in New York. That is an actual case study of a restaurant in New York that used Instagram in such an easy and brilliant way. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but later when we're done with the presentation, please by all means click on all of these case studies and take a look at actual examples of what people are using and doing with these uh, social media platforms. The case of the uh, Komodo restaurant in New York is that they decided to create a hashtag called Komodo Menu. The, Komo the Instagram menu, the Komodo Instagram menu. And what they decided to do is actually put an item on their menu that says hashtag Instagram menu. And then what people would do is that people love to go to restaurants and when they love the food and it's a gorgeous presentation, they take pictures of it, right? Well, this restaurant actually encouraged people to take pictures of their favorite dishes and hashtag the restaurant. And then if you are not sure what you're going to get, you come to the restaurant for the first time, there's an item at the bottom of the menu that says hashtag Instagram menu. You can go to your Instagram and it pulls up all of their patrons' favorite dishes and they will make that for you as long as it's off the Instagram menu. It's a brilliant idea. It's a way to tag in new people with older patrons. It's kind of a viral way of doing word of mouth and it worked really well. And all they really needed to do was get their servers involved and tell, for them to tell the patrons to about the, 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 the promotion or the, 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 the initiative, the social initiative that they were trying to carry out. And it worked really well. So that's a very creative and easy, no-cost way to leverage hashtags on Instagram. Twitter. Uh, again, Twitter is, is a very, very strong platform. Um, I would say that in some cases, I just as strong depending on what your targets are. Although, again, it's a very different platform than you would use with uh, Facebook. For example, customized um, 
But one of the key things is the difference is the, the amount of information that you could put on there. So you're basically limited to 140 characters. So what you want to do on here, again, is be short, sweet, and straight to the point, and be strategic on how you are creating the posts. Some of the important things for the page itself is customize the page and include your company branding. Again, there's tools that allow you to be able to design and customize uh, Twitter. So what you want to do is you want to create a header, include your logo, information, and all, again, images. Images are what catches the eyes and why, what draws attention to you and make sure you're using good quality of images. Again, keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it straight to the point. Utilize um, hashtags. Follow people that you would like to target. Again, if there's a specific group of people or there's a specific person, what you want to do is you want to head and follow them. Um, it's one of those the type of things that once you follow someone, um, they almost feel obligated to follow you back. So it's a good way of reaching out and keeping in touch with people, specifically people that you're looking to target. Uh, monitor the page insight to determine the frequency of posting. Again, unlike uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, the timeline runs very, very, uh, very deep. So once you post something on there, chances are that in a couple of minutes, it's buried between 20 or 30 different other things. So what you want to do is you want to post a little bit more frequent, but you also want to monitor the insights to see if you are getting engagement and what's working and not working. Research hashtags to identify active conversations. Very, very important. What you, the last thing you want to do is create a hashtag and be the only one in that hashtag. So what you want to do is utilize the Facebook search tool and go in there, put hashtag, and put the specific keywords that you're looking for, and it'll show you all the different people that are utilizing that hashtag to create a conversation. Uh, use hashtags throughout the tweet, but make it slow. Again, making it human. So you want to make sure that if you're utilizing hashtags in the sentence, so for example, are you ready hashtag, or are you ready for hashtag St. Thomas hashtag destination wedding? Doesn't really make sense. You're missing a couple of uh, words. So what you want to do is you want to make it flow within a sentence, utilizing the keywords and hashtags that you want to target. Post images and utilizing um, utilizing Twitter to post images is also very important. Again, it's not always about text. You can utilize images, videos, and any type of media. Retweet good tweets. Again, as you follow people that are in the same same industry or same interest, what you want to do is retweet. It's almost like giving an endorsement. So when someone, it's almost a share like you would have on Facebook. So when someone's on Twitter and puts something interesting, they get a notification that says, so-and-so person has actually retweeted your tweet. That's almost endorsing it and giving it relevance. So if there's people that you want to follow, you want to be able to utilize the retweets to be able to create that relationship. Utilize the app to mention people in your tweets. Um, Again, if you want to target specific people and reach out to them, utilizing the app beforehand will actually send them a direct message. So using an example, a couple of years ago, we were doing, we were at a campaign for U.S. Virgin Islands, and we were talking about culinary. So in one of the tweets, we hashtag Rachel Ray, and for some reason she responded, and actually we, had a, we were able to have a conversation, and she was potentially coming down to the U.S. Virgin Islands to do, uh, do a program. So again, you want to be able to target specific people, and utilizing that gives you the opportunity to reach out to them directly. Pinterest. Again, keeping in mind the demographics of Pinterest, 80% uh, are women. Less than 20% of the pictures that are on there actually have faces. What you want to do, again, carry the branding for your account. You want to make sure that whatever platform people are going to, that they realize that they're going to the official page for that business. So utilizing the branding elements is key. Create your initial pin boards. Again, for a hotel, what you want to do is you want to create a board for your hotel rooms, your restaurant, your spa, your different facilities, your different amenities. You should also go outside of your hotel and put places of interest, landmarks, and create boards and post pictures in there. Seed your initial pin boards. Again, as you create these uh, initial boards, what you want to do is you want to populate them with some good graphics and good pictures. Get your partners involved. Again, utilizing the location, if your hotel is located close to a museum, you want to be able to work with a museum and post information and vice versa. Have them create a board on their page that would include your hotel features, amenities, and stuff that you want, would like to promote. Create fan curated boards. Pinterest also allows you to create boards that allows others to be able to post information, post uh, images into that board. So doing that creates that 
user-generated content, which again, at the end I had mentioned it earlier, what the morphosis of social media has gone from just the businesses posting information to utilizing uh, user-generated content, which is more authentic and it's received a little bit more because it's not actually coming from the business. It's almost like getting someone to endorse your business by posting information out there. And lastly is add a pin button to your website. By adding a pin button to your website, it allows the users that have Pinterest to be able to easily grab images from your website and put them in different boards and share. So again, in order to create that viral uh, ability, you want to be able to allow them the ability to be able to pull information from your website and share it. But again, the key is having good quality of images and actually good images and good quality images that can be shared. And with that, before I turn it to Adriana, I just wanted to kind of just end with this little quick thing that I always keep in mind is social media is fun. Don't force it to be business. Be authentic and be yourself. And that's really the key because with social media across every platform, it's about building a personality and having that personality have relationships with its fans and followers. So again, make it fun and enjoy it. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to go into the Q&A portion of the webinar and go ahead and start writing uh, questions into the chat for Javier and myself. There's one question from Elizabeth Miller. I'm going to let you answer that question first, Javi. Um, yeah. And it would be, and then I'll throw my two cents in. She says, most of our travelers are 45 plus, and with 45 being young for this age group, what percentage of travelers in this age group are involved in social media? Which social media, in addition to Facebook, are travelers 45 to 75 currently using most? What would you recommend as a strategy for that age group? Hmm. Well, I think there's a couple of different things that, that come into play. Number one is the demographics are also determined by location, um, the property itself, and, and the different amenities that you offer. So for example, um, utilizing like Bimini Big Game Club, um, their demographic is a higher demographic and it's highly geared towards men um, because it's fishing. So that target, you really have to do a little bit of research and, and kind of find what, what is it you're offering, what are you targeting them for, um, if it's golf for example or if it's spas, then that would be the market. But each platform also does have its unique way of being able to target specific people. So it, it kind of really depends. It's kind of a it, it's a tough uh, tough thing to kind of answer just straight because there really is no one answer. Again, Facebook is the the gorilla which has every, everybody is pretty much on uh, on Facebook and engages. But it just depends on what is it that you are trying to target them for. Not necessarily you know just the age group is what what are you trying to target? And we can add to that. Yeah, um, I agree with everything you said. Actually, the one thing with um, with regards to, I mean, everybody knows, everybody's heard the articles that Facebook is getting older. And it is true. A lot of Facebook users have migrated to Instagram. And if you're looking for a particular platform, I would say that, yes, Facebook would be the one that you would need to focus on. Now, that being said, I think it's very important to be platform agnostic, to be, you know, to, because the thing is that a lot of social media changes very frequently. And what could be, you know, Facebook today might be MySpace tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you don't know. So I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. I would have a, a well-rounded approach utilizing several platforms. I think the idea is that as long as you optimize your content and make sure that the content speaks to that demographic, you should get across efficiently. Another thing is you can always, I know this sounds kind of simple, but ask your customers what platforms they prefer. Have them tell you. Look at your insights. And as Javier said um, very, very well, it's, it really does depend on your particular customers. I know that a lot of times any, you know, people ask marketers a question and they say, well, it depends. That's our standard answer because it really does matter. Uh, it, everything, every a hotel and every business is different, but I, I think it's important not to put all your eggs in just one basket and overall just look at trying to optimize your content strategy because that will overall feed into everything that you're doing as far as digital marketing. It will improve your 
your SEO, it'll improve uh, your social, and overall it will it will be good all around. I hope that answers your question, Elizabeth. Um, and let's see, does anybody else have a question that we can answer for them? If you want to go ahead and type that in. Well, actually, I have a question uh, for Javier uh, regarding the, the new things that are coming up with Google Plus right now. I, would, I wanted to know what you were thinking because now Google Plus is detaching itself. It's detaching its different services. And one of the first ones that it's kind of detaching from is YouTube. So it looks like Google Plus is on its way down. Would yeah. you agree with that as a, as a social platform? It's if it's Google Plus to be a standalone, what are your thoughts? Well, <laughs> again, Google, because it is a Google platform, it's, it's very tied into the Google search. Now, they, when they originally came on board, uh, they were looking to really target and compete directly against, um, against Facebook. It just never really developed as being the same type of experience when you're on Google Plus and when you're on Facebook. However, realizing that the information that you post in Google Plus is deeply integrated into Google search. So, for example, if someone was to search, and again, using that example, destination weddings, if somebody was to search destination weddings and they're following me on, um, on Google+, Plus or my company on Google+, Plus, then that would automatically show up one of the organic search results, where on the other platforms it's not as integrated as deep. So, as far as them going away and changing, I think they're restructuring, trying to figure out how they can monetize it, because again, it all boils down to, you know, just like even Facebook, they change things around because at the end of the day, they want to make money. So their mm -hmm. ad programs come into play. So I, I think it's still one of those that is evolving. Is it, is it going to go away? I'm not sure if it's going to completely go away, but I think it is going to probably change. Um, mm -hmm. Because the, connect, the, connected, yeah, the, the connection between Google Plus and, and, again, the Google search algorithm is, is so strong, that so powerful that I don't see them just completely getting rid of it, but I can see them kind of restructuring or maybe even just getting and having someone else kind of uh, – take it over, but still that integration with uh, the search engine algorithm is it's just yeah. so powerful that it just won't go away. Yeah, it gives you Google juice, which is what we all need in order to be relevant on that search, uh, on, on that search. so absolutely. Um, one question that we got from Marilyn Hernandez, she's asking, how does LinkedIn compare to these other platforms? Um, I'm going to just throw in my two cents and then Javier, if you wouldn't mind chiming in. Um, yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn is the professional social network. So that one is wonderful if you want to, for example, as a hotel or as a, uh, a property, if you want to target perhaps the business traveler. That would be a great way to, to approach that, or even meeting planners. Um, you, it, it is a, a business to business platform, but that still doesn't mean that you can't leverage it. Correct. Yep. I, I, I agree. You know, one of the, one of the really things to keep in mind is that you know every every platform whether it's LinkedIn Twitter I mean has a certain strength I think uh -huh. how you engage and how you and understand how to take it and maximize them so for example looking at LinkedIn I mean for group business for hotels is huge so let's say for example you want to book a group out of Motorola or you want to talk at Motorola but you know nobody there utilizing LinkedIn to be able to find out who is there and then how you connected and get someone else to kind of connect with that person so it, it is relevant. It's just used in a completely different way. Yeah, you know, yeah. Posting is often the information that you're posting is not just general to consumer. It's more business to business. So uh -huh. the conversations are different, but the ultimate goal, which is to drive revenue, is there. It's just a matter of how you engage it and really understanding how you want to be able to maximize your experience on there. Right. It's a different audience. That's all it yeah, is. Completely. You just have to adjust your content to a more to a professional audience. One thing that I think that for, for hotels, in particular if you're looking at groups, if you have the meeting space to be able to accommodate larger groups for incentive travel or for meetings and conventions or things like that, LinkedIn is a great source. And by just having, for example, uh, writing articles, because now LinkedIn has a great feature that en en enables users to write blog posts 
which you would think, well, why would I want to write a blog post on LinkedIn instead of my own blog? You want to do both. But why would you want to do it on LinkedIn? Because you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You have a bunch of people that are already, already following, and these posts will be then suggested, if you have the right keywords, will be suggested to other LinkedIn users. So it's a great way to position yourself as an influencer and a, and a leader in, in your industry. And it's a great way to draw in more professional connections. And again, when it comes down to it, social is really all about relationships. Regardless of the platform, it's all about building those relationships so that you can be on Facebook one day, LinkedIn the other, Twitter the next, and there could be a new platform that starts tomorrow. But the idea is that you bring with you your, your tribe, so to speak, on whichever platform it is and you maintain the, the engagement and the connection online because it's really, it's why it's called social media. It's a two-way street. Okay, guys, well, I think we are done. The questions that we were not able to answer, we'll go ahead and send an email to myself or to Javier. We will be happy to to help you out and answer any of your other questions. Javier, thank you so much for participating in the webinar. No, thank you, and I look forward to seeing everybody in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. We'll see you all in NPR. Have a great day, and thank you again for, for being part of the, of the webinar.